Then Moses said to the Lord, See, you said to me, Bring up these people, but you have not let me know whom you will send with me. But you have told me to bring these people up <laughs> out of slavery. But you have not given me concrete concrete assurance of who I know of the people but I don't know who will help me because currently I'm overwhelmed this is Moses speaking I am overwhelmed this is overwhelming and because of the overwhelming nature of bringing these people up I my heart goes out for Moses every time that I remember that he did not make it to the promised land it just overwhelmed him and I just want to pray for parents that the tax of raising your children will not make you miss your life. Amen. Moses is talking about purpose. Yet you say, there is a purpose. You know me. I have found grace in your sight. Now, therefore, I pray, if I have found grace, if this is purpose, if this is not about your sight, if this is about, this is now about your sight, this is about you, Please show me now your way that I may know the, I may know you and that I may find grace in your sight. And Moses is just rambling and just talking and venting his own frustration to the one who gave him the purpose. And consider that this nation is your people. This is pur purpose. Purpose is being involved in something that is not your own. Whether it's a business that you are building, it reaches a dimension, you know, this is no longer about you. At moments, you are walking in purpose. That you are building business, you know, it reaches a point. It's no longer about buying, paying your bill. Now you begin to see families. Begin to see the larger economy. Begin to see large, larger contribution. Begin to see something larger than you. Begin to see a meaning that is larger than you. These people, that's how you know you are in purpose. That it reaches a point, what you do... It's no longer about your personal pain, what, what the fulfillment it brings to you as a person, the joy it brings to you as a person. And that's what makes raising children such a great thing in purpose. Because it, it reaches a point you realize this is no longer about you. It's no longer about you. I once spoke in Ibom Hall those days, and a man was very, very offended, very, very offended. When I told him, if you're raising your children is so that they will come and take care of you. If all you do in raising your children, the only interest you have is that they will come and take care of you. You, I, <laughs> it's such a pitiable situation. It's such a pitiable thing that if at this stage, your, your motive, say I'm raising these children so that they will come and take care of you. I think that's the definition of poverty, right? That's, that's, I'm trying to make sure I don't use some words that pop up in my spirit. I'm editing words in my spirit. Yeah. Because raising, rearing pigs is to take care of you. If you have pigry behind you and you raise pigs, it's to take care of you. You have poultry farm. And behind you, once in a while, you go and feed it. In the morning, you get, you get, get eggs for breakfast. At noon, lunch, you just kill one of them. <laughs> it's taken care of. If you plant some garden, have fruits, vegetable, and somebody goes out in the morning, picks this and that and that and does something, and something comes out of it, and we all smile. That's, that's it. But that's not children. That's not. So if you raise children in the mindset of building a poultry farm, of having pigry, of planting, cut, uh, plant, planting, planting around you so that when they ripe, when they are mature, you will harvest. If that's the mindset of raising children, I think... I will not say anything about it because I don't like what, I want, uh, that, what it sounds like. You should be mo one of the most pitiable people. People should wake up in the morning and cry that you are alive. Absolutely. I think that's the best, the mildest way to put it. People should mourn 
that you are alive and that you are raising children. You don't raise children to take care of you. You raise children to fulfill purpose for God and for his kingdom and for the world. Raise rulers because this world is in need of rulers. There's so many fools. And the world is in need of wisdom. So we raise wise children to cancel out on the foolishness of so many. Raise leaders. Sir, raising children is a purpose. Spend everything you have. Wear, your, wear yourself out to raise the next generation. God is looking for godly seed. And godly seeds are not accidental seeds. They are intentional seeds. I pray in the name of Jesus that something is currently overwhelming you. So build business beyond by paying bills. Build business beyond paying bills. Throw yourself into something beyond what you can get out of it. Get involved in what is larger than you. Some authors have said that until you find yourself in something that is larger than you, you have not yet lived. You have not yet found a life. I pray in the name of Jesus that there is something larger than you in your life. There's something larger than you. So you don't need God's presence until you have something larger than you. Oh, you don't need the presence of God if you are creating just business to eat and drink and drive a car. But if it is something to provide opportunity for, the, for people in the neighborhood, for people in the economy. <laughs> oh, praise God. I don't want to say too much. That is when you begin to tell God, I just can't like, look at somebody like Dan Gute. What is the presence that is helping him? There's something helping him. That's the man that Nigerian government cannot ignore. Who as a believer will tell God, give me the key? Who has passion for the hungry, roaming people on our streets? Who has passion beyond just giving handouts, giving somebody 100 naira, and coming to church and somebody begs you, and you don't get to know what can you do but you feel privileged to give 1,000 and call the person a beggar. You don't deserve to have a business that needs the presence of God. Until you see beyond the beggar into the mind in the beggar and say, what could you be that you have not yet become? And then you go home crying. Lord, there are these intelligent, gifted, able people. Can you just scale up this business? Even in the body of Christ, let's give you employment. Let's just give employment. Let's just train people. Let's just, let's just give capacity. Knowing that there are many people who don't need capacity, they just need to beg. But there are remnants who just want to have a life and they are ready to fight. That's what I'm praying for. That's what you need presence for. So the presence of God is not to eat a cookie and my mind. The presence of God is not just to marry and have children and have a life that are better past you, my neighbor. The presence of God is needed for what is national, what is international, what is global, and what is universal. Patrick Grace Henry is the president, Grace Family Commonwealth of Champions. Worship with us every Sunday in any of our services, Rising Stars Assembly by 7 a.m. and Champions Family Assembly by 9 a.m. Earth Live on Planet 101.1 FM and Spectrum TV at 10 a.m. Every Thursday for Word Power Encounter by 5 p.m. Venue Goshen, Kilometer 14, Wangiba Road, Ekamban Sukara, Uyo, Akwaibom State. Join our live streaming on Facebook, YouTube at Grace Family Outreach and on the Christ Radio app. You can become a part of this great revolution by becoming a partner today. To all our partners and friends, we say thank you. For partnership, please call 0907-383-8742. For prayers, counseling, and inquiries, please call 0818-043-3225 or 0803-671-5303. Grace Family, raising champions from ordinary people.